What makes me different is that I was born without a hand and half of my forearm, which is mostly to some people would find a more limit, but I think of it more as um, a strategy in some ways and um, to overcome. I think that it's great how she's still going for what she loves, even if she has uh, limit limitations. She's still she's still such a great player. It's crazy how she gets everything back. It would just be so difficult thinking like, okay, I'm still gonna go out and do this, and I respect her so much for that. How she just keeps on fighting for what she loves. Liberty won that match, and although Hope was a bit disappointed, she was glad her competitors gave it their all because nothing bothers Hope more than receiving special treatment. Her tennis coach, Mark Allison, learned this three years ago when Hope first told him she wanted to be on the team. She just wanted an equal, fair shot, just like everybody else, and that's what we were gonna give her. Three years ago, she started, she played JV. Last year, she made the varsity lineup at the number four double spot, which is our last doubles area. She told me at the beginning of the summer, she said, I'm going to play singles this year, which only the top players play at singles. And she worked really hard this summer on her game, and she's our number two singles player this year, which is just amazing. I would watch Roderick Federer on um, TV and be like, all right, I want to do that. I didn't know how to play, but I just knew that I wanted to play because it just looked cool. When I started, I couldn't do a serve for the life of me because, you know, you have to throw the ball with one hand and hit it with the other, and I'm like, oh, this is going to take me forever. But later, I think Ms. Ammerman, who was my JV coach, really pushed. Like, she did not let up at all, and that's what really got me through. It's simple. Hope is stubborn, but stubborn in the sense that nobody is going to tell her no. Being quote-unquote normal doesn't interest her. Hope has always been and will continue to be true to herself. I've been working with disabled adults for 35 years, so, but it's different when it hits home. And, you know, I tried everything. We brought her down to Children's Hospital in Philly to get her prosthetic arm, and she was like, no. They were like, why do you want one? I was like, I wanted to learn to ride a bike like everyone else. I wanted her to have the opportunity of gripping onto something. And we brought it home. <laughs> she took it off, said, you wear it. And I was just like, OK, she's going to do this without it. And she was a go-getter from the start. A go-getter. That's a pretty perfect way to describe Hope. Throughout her high school years, she has set goals for herself, worked hard to achieve success, and shown gratitude to everyone who has supported her for who she is. I'm around her so much and she's we've been together so long that you, you don't even you don't even think about that at all. You know, she's just one of our better tennis players out there playing tennis and she's the captain of our team. If you're lucky in your whole lifetime coaching to get somebody like Hope, you, you're you're a lucky coach and uh, I'm a lucky coach. Hope is a senior. She's not sure where she'll go to college yet, but her athletic career at Pleasant Valley isn't over. She'll also compete this spring for the Bears softball team. After that, the sky is the limit. She's going to be fine, and she's going to make it, and she's an inspiration to people with disabilities because she's not disabled. She does everything. Right? Two years old, she put on her sock, got dressed, does her hair all by herself. She didn't need me. The whole world is her playground. Providing you with a little piece of hope from Pleasant Valley, I'm Courtney DuPont for Two Sports.